Anyway, our guest today, it's really lovely to have a laugh uh, because, you know, difficult things go on in people's lives. And um, there's a shocking fact, actually, I was reading that any mum or dad to be would not like to hear one in 10 pregnancies can result in a baby born prematurely, which means it's always an important subject to shine a light on and talk about, particularly as today is World Prematurity Day. And it was 20 years ago that on Millennium Eve, Tana Ramsey, who's the wife of Gordon Ramsey, gave birth to her twins in an emergency operation six weeks before they were due to be born. Um, the good news is that those twins, Jack and Holly, are now healthy 20-year-olds and uh, their mum, Tana, joins us now. Tana, good morning, or afternoon, I should say now. Sorry, Tana. And it is lovely. We must say that now, you know, fit and healthy and lovely, uh, Holly and Jack, your twins. But what a scary time for you. Um, tell us what happened on that Millennium Eve. Well, I mean, it was quite an unexpected event. Um, I woke up that morning with um, just a, a slight tummy ache. Uh, I didn't really think too much of it. Um, then Gordon actually said to me, uh, he said, gosh, you were so restless in the night, you know, everything feeling okay. Um, and being Millennium Eve, we thought it was sensible to get checked out because we figured that uh, sort of the later on in the day it got to no one would be available. So I went and had a, a scan and the monitors that they put on your tummy. And the doctor said to me, well, this isn't actually going to stop. You're going to have these babies today. So... You know, that's uh, immediately quite shocking. Um, I thought I still had almost two months of pregnancy left. Um, but no, Jack and Holly were born early evening and suddenly we were thrown into this, uh, this unknown world of the neonatal unit. They were taken straight to intensive care, um, both on ventilators for 24 hours. Um, and suddenly you're, you're in this world that you don't know anything about you've been in this bubble of everything going fine and and suddenly um, you're facing all kinds of scary situations how did it feel different Tana because at that point you had Megan didn't you who's your uh, yes. oldest so you'd, I, you'd had a relatively normal pregnancy there how different did it feel that suddenly because you, you can't really hold your babies can you because they're, they're in an incubator well, that's it. With Megan, she'd been handed straight to me and, and didn't leave my arms for, you know, until then when I was suddenly in hospital. Um, you know, you, the, the babies were, were very quickly shown to me and then you're almost wanting them to be taken away to, to check what they need, how they are, to assess everything. Um, and suddenly they're in incubators, they have wires everywhere, um, the ventilators, and, um, and you can't pick them up and you, you almost, you have to ask for permission to do anything. Whereas as a mum, all you want to do is, is hold your baby and, um, and, and bond. And I think that is the one thing that has, yeah. has really shocked me when I, I've teamed up with, with Pampers for this campaign is that suddenly these mums and dads, um, they can't even be by the side of their babies. They can't be asking the questions. They can't be trying to sort of bond the way, the way even if you can't hold them, you want to, to touch their little fingers or just talk to them. So it, it's been really hard. It's, it's heartbreaking. And I think the, the thing that has become so apparent is it's, it's really affecting the anxiety and mental health of, of parents, mums and dads. But Tana, when you were pregnant, it's not something you really considered and then you had to leave the babies in hospital and go home to Megan, who was two. What was it like going home? Well, that, that's heartbreaking because you, it, it, this, it feels so unnatural to, to be leaving where your yeah, babies are. But at the same time, yeah. you're being torn in two because I have Meg who uh, had been used to being by my side all of the time and suddenly mummy's disappeared and, um, you know, she was with my mum, she was with Gordon, so she was perfectly safe. But, you know, I think that that's one of the things that, that, that at the moment it's causing such feelings of isolation for, for mums, for dads, for siblings. And 
it, it's been quite incredible, actually, working alongside Bliss, one of the leading premature baby charities. Um, Recreate have come up with this technology to have these screens just to help the communication between between siblings or grandparents or, or mums and dads um, to, to connect with both the neonatal nurses looking after their babies and to actually see their babies because that, that sort of ability to physically see them, I think, makes such a difference and it, it just helps that communication and it's it, it's getting people talking as well because the one thing I found was I, I clung to all stories of you know people who'd had this situation who'd been in premature baby world um, all you want to hear is is other people's experiences and and talk about it. Tana you spoke a, a little bit earlier about being next to your babies and everything how supportive was Gordon through the pregnancy I, I understand that you both made this decision not to have him in the labour room as well. Why was that? Well, there's always there's always so much chat about. Uh, you know, I, I, I was saying to somebody earlier, it's such a personal decision when you have a baby, and um, you know, this was 20 years ago, and the way that I felt, the way that Gordon felt, it was something we decided on together. He wasn't with me when I when I gave birth to to Meg or the twins or Tilly. Um, but now, you know, we're older and it, it's, it's quite interesting because um, I lost a baby in 2016 and Gordon was with me throughout that entire process. And there is, there is no way I could have done it without him right there by my side. When we went on to have Oscar um, 19 months ago, again, he was right there by my side. So I think oh. you just have to do what absolutely suits you. And the one thing that, that Gordon and I... Are very good at doing is communicating everyone knows he's good at chatting well <laughs> you know it's really made me I think what, what has happened has made me come out of a shell naturally I'm a little bit more of a private person but it, through different things we've gone through like losing our, our little boy Rocky is I've learned that actually sharing my experiences it's brought so many people forwards to tell me about their experiences and I, I found that really comforting and that's one thing I think with social media, certainly with this campaign that I'm so happy to be a part of, is hearing people's stories and using our hashtag triggers donations to help others. And I, I just, I think getting talking, I found the biggest comfort. Uh, well, congratulations on, on Oscar. I bumped into you in the park the other day. <laughs> they, we live near each other. And it's Gordon in a onesie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I was halfway in the bushes trying to rescue him from chasing all the dogs. Well, Tyler, listen, it's, it's good to talk to you. It's, it's great to see Holly and Jack doing so well. And as you said, it's, you, know, you, would, you liked to hear stories of premature babies who've, who've gone on to be you know, good, strong, healthy adults. And that's what you've done, obviously, for a lot of people today. Uh, good luck with the campaign. Uh, lovely to talk to you and love to Gordon and the rest of the family from us. Thank you so much. Thank you.